Security Now Illustrated by AskMrWizard.com Illustrating concepts, mechanisms, and algorithms from the amazing Security Now podcast by Steve Gibson and Leo Laporte. This is episode 388 from January of 2013. Memory Hard Problems Steve set the scene for the propeller head segment of episode 388 by reviewing the ease with which malevolent hackers have been able to obtain or buy huge lists of hashed passwords due to break-ins, mismanagement, or poor security in major corporations and institutions. Of course, these lists generally do not contain the actual password values. That would be too easy. Instead, these are lists of password hashes each of which is a mathematical summary of a corresponding password, as described in other Security Now episodes. Each hash is generally calculated using one of a few well-documented, standardized, published hash algorithms. Now, hashes are not just encrypted passwords. They are truncated so that they do not contain enough information to be decrypted back into the original password. The only way to learn the actual password that corresponds with a specific hash is to guess it. Hackers take an educated guess, typically from lists of common passwords, and they run it through the same hash algorithm and compare the result to check it for a match. Steve then described the amazing success achieved by researchers as they have built specialized supercomputers, each with thousands of hash-generated processors working in series-parallel pipeline arrays. Machines like these are easily capable of evaluating millions of password guesses per second and are becoming affordable by organized criminals and sophisticated malevolent hackers. As a result, any long purloined list of password hashes can quickly yield thousands of valid passwords after just a few seconds of analysis. The industry has sought and found a new way to calculate password hashes that cannot be so easily compromised because it demands a huge amount of memory, which, due to the massive size demanded by this technique, is far more expensive and difficult for evil hackers to dedicate to attack activities. These techniques have come to be known as memory hard problems. So what we want is memory hard problems, not hashes. Hashing could be involved, but we want something that we cannot fool. And that's where the crypto comes in. Something that cannot be fooled, where the whatever it is we do requires, it requires a huge array of memory and there's no way to cheat. And The cool thing is, it turns out it's simple. Um, And here's an algorithm. This is is sort of a simplified version, but it's enough that you can get your hands around and I can describe over the podcast and you'll get it. And it's all you need. It works. And that is, you take a, use a hash function, use whatever we want, SHA1, SHA256, whatever, doesn't matter. And we, we, Fill a large region of memory with pseudo-random data derived from the password. So we take the password and hash it. Out comes 256 bits. Store them in the first area of memory. Hash it. Hash that again. Salt it if you want to. Mix the password in again. Doesn't really matter. Hash it again. Store that. Hash it again. Store that. Hash it again. Store that. Fill the entire realm of memory. And we're, you know, we're in, in the gigabyte realm. So we've got gigabytes. Let's do four gigs. Fill four gigs with this with this pseudo-random data based on the password. So every time this is done, this with the same password, we'll get the same array of noise. Now, what we need that so that's part one. What we need is some way to prove that all of that memory was filled and present all the time. That is, we need a a system that we cannot cheat, that there's no way to do this with an old scratch pad somehow. So what we do is we then 
take the password and hash it what, as the same way we started before. This time, we take some piece of that hash, maybe the high end, the middle, the low end, and we use that to address into the array. So we use that as a pointer into the array and take the data there and hash that with the first hash value. The output of that is another pointer into the array. And we hash, we, so we look up what's there and, and maybe XOR it with the password, whatever we want to do, hash that and take part of that as a pointer again. And so you can see where we are. What this does is we have filled an array with pseudo-random bits, huge array. Then we are jumping in a pseudo-random pattern throughout that array, and where we go is based on what is stored there. So the only way when we're done is to, to have the final result of this is if everywhere we went, we found what we expected to find in that location. We don't know in advance any of this, except that we know that when we're finally done, we end up with a value. And we know that any time we put the same thing, uh, the, st the same starting value in and do this to it, we're going to get the same value out. And we also know that the only way to do that is if, is, is if that memory is physically, statically present in its entirety as we madly jump around it many, many times, getting the data where we land and using that to tell us where to go next, which is all pseudo-random. So, so our path through this array is fixed for a given input, totally unpredictable, and we have to have all that memory there. The original, audio-only version of this podcast can be found on the Gibson Research Corporation site at grc.com slash security now. This clip illustrates some of the highlights from that show. This video clip comes from a large collection of related clips. All are indexed and easy to find at www.askmrwizard.com, along with related items, text articles, illustrations, and forums. Please visit us today. We appreciate your support. Thank you.